Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is uh, going to be an episode, again, on an update on the long-range outlook, what's to come, and um, the, the major pattern change is becoming more and more likely to occur. More models are starting to show it, and this Climate Prediction Center is also starting to um, really take a good grasp on it, and everything's coming together. Before we do get into this video, I would really ask you guys, uh, I would be greatly appreciated if you, uh, if you considered subscribing to this channel, um, I obviously recommend it, <laughs> I'm the owner of this channel, but, um, I mean, you could ask some other people, they really love this channel, and in my opinion, it's, it's a worthwhile, it's worthwhile to subscribe, it's free, all you gotta do is click that subscribe button, if you're not convinced yet, you know, um, and you just like this video, at least like the video, and then you could go and check out the channel and then consider subscribing. So, uh, let's look at the past 72 hours, uh, what are we looking at right now? Okay, so, we're at negative 72 hours, we were in a little bit of a, a chilly air mass, uh, you could see that some of this cooler air was across the parts of the United States, this is Thursday now, this is getting on Friday, you can see it's starting to like kind of wind away, not really hot anymore, or I should say, not really cool anymore. Some of this, I think the GFS is a little bit underwhelming on uh, some of this warmth. I think it'll be mainly a little bit warmer across much of the country across Sunday, um, Monday, though. You can see the GFS is still showing those blue anomalies during the day, and uh, they're showing below average temperatures, which I'm not too convinced about, but as of now, you can see that this is what they're showing, so, uh, I would say on a chillier side, but definitely, I don't think it's gonna be cold, you know, way below average for this time of the year for the next couple of days, but definitely not, uh, you know, not... I mean warm it's not gonna be hot no heat waves, but then notice how we see this feature right here It's uh, coming down from around. This is next Friday on uh, next weekend You can see it's this nice feature here. Uh, it's uh, it's a high pressure that's driving itself downwards and you can see it's spinning around and this is driving the winds down to the south while the, the, the two air masses meet, and you can see that if we keep going forward, this eventually spills into the U.S., into the northern U.S. Notice some pretty good anomalies over there. Uh, that is, you know, possibly 20 degrees below average right there, and it just continues to spill, and look at that right there. This is possibly a very big one uh, starting to, that could actually make its way fairly down into the southern U.S., very, very defined trough. It's digging down into the U.S. and starting more at, at a westward axis. So it's, uh, or I should say, at, you know, just it's starting off in a more westward position. So it allows it to uh, scrape many of these locations with the cooler temperatures. And watch as we put this into motion. Um, yeah, granted, this is very far out, but many of the models are already showing us. Look at it, starting to dig its way. Look at those anomalies. That is almost like a winter blast. But this is August 12th, and you can see that this is dead. Look at that. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. It gets down all the way to the Gulf Coast, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina, maybe a little bit spared from this, but many locations across the South are going to be in the cooler temperatures. Look at that right there. That is very chilly across North Dakota, probably some 40s. And then we could be looking at a little bit of a break, but there's, if we look up at the northern hemisphere, there's more reinforcements coming. And uh, let's look at some of the two meter temperature shaded, shall we? I mean, this GFS, if this uh, Arctic, you know, August outbreak were to occur, uh, we would be looking at some, you know, at some very substantial anomalies. Look at that, 40s by the border uh, during the night you know, uh, by North Dakota and Canada. And then look at that, during the day, I mean, 63, almost 50 degrees. This is, yes, very far out, but but it's, you know, this is showing basically that it's possible at this time of the year to be looking at uh, some of these outbreaks. And you can see that across the north during the night. I mean, look at that. Uh, that is a 50, 49, 50s across, a 50s possibly all the way down into the uh, northern Georgia, northern Alabama area. Obviously, this doesn't last for too long. You can see it starts warming up, but definitely not, uh, nothing hot. Um, especially for the eastern U.S. Maybe a little bit down towards the south, southwest Texas, but in the east, it is very going to be very chilly. If you look at the ensemble members, sorry, let's look at the GEFS, which is a bunch of uh, GFSs, basically in a family combined. And let's look at what the uh, what, what they're showing, what the pattern is like. And you can see uh, this is the 500 uh, millibar geopotential height, so this basically tells us where the troughs are. Uh, 
and where the ridges are so you could see there's a ridge probably right here and also notice how uh, there's several pieces of cooler air or I should say digging in the atmosphere and they're um, and they're starting to push towards uh, and they're starting to make this you can see the jet stream go like that which brings chillier air into the US or in the eastern US at this um, in this case and if we were to look a little bit uh, make put this into motion notice that look at that that is a pretty significant uh, trough it's pretty significant digging and look there's almost no um, ridge at all I mean this is almost completely suppressed there's one right there there's one right there and it basically loses all strength starts to make a comeback but um, you know it's not going to be too awfully strong and not make too much awfully of an impact as uh, we go further into the outlook period maybe we could be looking back into a zonal pattern but that's going to be already towards the middle to end part of august which by then um, we were we will be uh, you know we will be basically um, already past the first half month uh, the half month of August and we could be looking at it way below average opening to the August and let's look at the uh, uh, European model but first let me show you the 500 geo potential height and I want to show you what the European model was showing a couple days ago or uh, the previous model run at Friday yesterday's model run so notice how some you know nothing too bad uh, a ridge right there that would still allow a couple of um, you know warmer days to appear but if we were to look further into the time period this is August 6th 7th, look at that big big trough and this would bring very chilly conditions for the eastern US possibly the western US as well and look at that that just digs down and you're into the very uh, very far down into the northeast, which would bring very chilly conditions. And uh, let's go one model run prior to 12 this Thursday. Notice very similar thing, and that's 558 millibar line, a thickness line. That's that's pretty chilly. That's like 60s and 70s and 50s uh, during the nights um, across this uh, Canadian border and U.S. border in, in Michigan by the Great Lakes area. Um, if you were to look at the most recent model run, uh, it's showing similar thing. You can still see still that digging. And let's go to, however, I want to show you the European model run, but with the 2 meter temperature anomalies. And I want to show you, uh, basically, um, what the what you know what the anomalies will be for the temperature so whether it will be below or above average at what given time you could see that uh, this is becoming more and more likely the models are starting to become in more and more agreement that this is starting to that this major pattern change will actually occur and the European model you could see is showing a little bit of chill right there that is around 12 to 15 degrees below average across the, those southern plains but notice how there's a little bit of warming some above average temperatures across the north and, uh, uh, and the Great Lakes and I think there will be across uh, the next couple of days through Sunday, Monday, but then we start seeing uh, that big troughing pattern. Look at that. This blue just outbreaks and uh, or just lets loose and really digs into the U.S. And this is, again, the European model. So this isn't the GFS. And you can see it's also showing those fairly big anomalies across the Northeast with a little bit of warming. But notice how there's another interesting feature right there starting to break through, which we could be looking at um, some uh, some significant, um, significant cooling yet again. Let's show you that. Uh, this is basically what I already showed you on the um, on the uh, on the tropical tidbits earlier, right here. But I just want to show you from a different perspective, uh, looking more at the at the whole North American continent rather than just uh, the U.S. And you could see for now uh, nothing too significant. It's more of a warming pattern, still a little bit chilly across the south. But then again, we see that big uh, release of chilly air coming through and then afterwards yeah, it starts letting loose but we, we see more up here and uh, you know this could definitely bring some chill down into the US so definitely more of a warming pattern things are starting to uh, look more like fall and this is not just you know one model this is several models let's go to a different ensemble group the EPS and you can see still showing a very similar thing that digging in and you could see that would send the jet stream to go something like this up here possibly warmer conditions right there and in cooler conditions right there it should be something more like that actually and if we look at the eight to six to ten day outlook for the climate prediction center you could see that they're showing this blue right here these normal temperatures right there 
Sorry about that, it paused there for a second, but um, if you look at the 8 to 14 day outlook, you can see it expands, this blue, and this basically starts making its way further and further down into the US. Notice it's still a little bit warmer across the south, I think this is over-exaggerated, I don't think it'll be this um, this above average, you know, this warm uh, with such high confidence across the south, I, I would rather limit it to maybe something like this. Uh, I don't, these areas are in jeopardy for seeing cooler temperatures as well and you could see that uh, they're also showing warm for the northeast but again with what the european model was showing the eps ensembles and what the gefs ensembles were showing that the trough of the like basically this uh this vortex if you want to call it would dig its way down into the northeast and center itself right there which would bring the ch center of the chill right around that area so I think if this gets updated in the next couple of days, if it will be, say, 8 to 14 day outlook, but on August 5th, we'll be seeing a big, uh, cool, you know, a big area of cool across the northeast and possibly the south. So, I uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.